Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now today, I'm starting work on a very ambitious build, a copper and caterium factory, which will aim to produce 12,000 copper ingots per minute, creating quick wire, AI limiters, copper sheets, cable and wire, amongst a few other things. And it's gonna have all the ore delivered to it via a series of trucks on our new road network. Oh, and it's, um, it's also built on top of a waterfall. Now to create such volume, we're going to require over 400 refineries in total, something that we haven't even unlocked yet. And the power consumption alone is about three times what we currently produce on our entire network. Now I know this can seem a little overwhelming, especially if you've been following along previous videos, but this build will be broken into two phases. And it'll be achieved thanks to a lot of pre-planned blueprints, all of which are available in the description for free. What's more, if you want to start the build alongside me, the save file is available right from at this very moment, so you can see exactly what I've got in my world and how we're going to do it. Or if you just want to skip the early game and use my save as your template for a new game, you're more than welcome. I may give out a save in the future again when I get a little further, but not for a few more episodes until after this build is done. Right, so, before we begin, I just want to preface a few things that have changed since the previous video for those who followed along. I've expanded the road network, which if you're new here, you can see how to build in the previous video and even get the blueprints for that as well. I've also added a temporary setup to make motors, much like the sulfur and quartz temporary setups we had. Motors are going to be needed for refineries, and you'll want to set this up yourself during the course of this build so that when you get the layout and the foundations all placed, you've already made a few hundred motors in the background for the first few refineries you want to build. Again, you can always use the save file to see what I did, or you can just check the same link in the description for the production chains themselves on what machines I used. It's pretty basic, just a few containers that I've manually loaded with steel pipes and wire to make stators. And those stators then combine with rotors to make motors. I feed the rotors into a container manually as well, and then I just let the machine work in the background. It is super simple. With all of that out of the way, I just wanted to extend a quick thanks for the support on this series and for people's patience. Hopefully you can appreciate the time and effort that goes into these videos, not just playing the game, but the planning, the documentation to help others, and the formatted blueprints. It makes estimating the time for each episode extremely unpredictable, so I'm often running late, which, trust me, hurts me more than anything. But rest assured, I'm doing the best I can to get the videos out as quick as possible, but also trying to minimize making mistakes, and also to try and create interesting designs. Again, thank you for the support, remember to like the video, share it with friends or people you think may also be interested, and thanks again to the channel members for going that extra mile. There's over 400 of you now, which is really, really amazing. Alright, let's begin. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'd be lying if I didn't say that this was extremely nerve-wracking. I have no idea how this is going to go. It's quite the ambitious build. I've tried to make sure dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, I'm all buttoned up, I got my blueprints in my back pocket, I'm ready to go. But with the scope of this build, you just never know how things are really going to pan out. So, I'm here to hold your hand through it though, hopefully I can guide you through nice and easy, and you can hold mine as well, because I'm going to need it. Over on the right hand side of the screen, we have the Copper Caterium Factory. Our first port of call is going to be fulfilling the requirements for the oil processing milestone. That's going to unlock, of course, the tasty refinery, which we're going to be using a lot of in this episode. I'll tell you some of the numbers on the drive over to the location. We're then going to build a dam, because why not? Dams are pretty fun, right? Sizing and layout, we're going to scope the place out, build the foundations, of which we need something like 5,000 just for the bottom floor, which, you know, translates to about 35,000 concrete, so I hope you've been saving up in the background. If not, get out there now and tap a few limestone nodes because you're going to need it. After that, we can actually put in some of the things, like truck stations for the copious amounts of ore delivery that we're going to be requiring, as well as the copper refineries themselves, the caterium refineries, if you've got any time left over at all, water extractors are going to be filling the place up. Remember, this is a two-parter episode, so in the next one, I'm going to go over any questions, comments, concerns that we might have from the previous one, this one, <laughs> just in case there's any corrections that we need to make. Hopefully not, you know, hopefully not. But it's good to have that second part in there just in case. So make sure you watch both before you commit to the build, just in case, but always check the pinned comments on top. Again, just in case. Just need to say it because the coal build was a big build, and that had a lot of issues. 
This one is far larger, so you just never know. <laughs> Alright, so, bearing that in mind, we'll have the next episode for the ore delivery. The truck stations are going to get their stuff. We're going to power it on and run a few different tests and make sure everything's working as intended. Okay, so, to get us started, I've got an inventory full of the stuff we're going to need for this oil processing milestone. I'll talk over some of the numbers as we get driving out there. But effectively, what we're going to be unlocking is the oil processing milestone, which is going to give us oil extractors, refineries, valves, plastic, rubber, circuit boards, petroleum, coke, fuel, allow us to scan for oil, and some shop products in the awesome shop. So, it needs, it needs 50 motors, 100 industrial encased beams, or encased industrial beams, always say it wrong, steel pipes, and copper sheets. Now, the motors I've made already in between episodes by setting up a little makeshift little area, which I hopefully showed at the beginning, but also I found about 60 motors just going around various hard drive sites. So hopefully you could do that too, or you could just craft them manually if you have, you know, if you don't mind spending a little bit of time doing that. And that's just to get the milestone unlocked. You're going to need quite a lot of motors to actually build the refineries, so I recommend setting up a makeshift kind of thing as I did in the beginning. Boom. All processing. Godspeed. So, over here we have the temporary sort of... Hang on, Ada. The temporary little motor area, and this is where we have motors. I've made uh, 450. I'm just going to take all these. Actually, no, I'll pop, pop them back just for a second, sort my inventory. This place is just a little short of rotors, so I'm just going to grab some extra rotors, dump them in there, just to show you how I've been doing things. And let it cook in the background, making more and more motors for us, because we're going to need, like I said, quite a lot. So I'll let these roll on in. The stators are kind of backed up and made already. And this assembly will just be cranking out five motors per minute in the background until it exhausts all resources. We'll take those motors now and get driving. So of course, in between episodes, I've been building out that road network. Um, if I haven't mentioned it already, this episode save will be out there for you guys to kind of build along with. So if you want to see where the road is, you can always just download the save and compare it to your own. Or, as some people do, is just start the game from this point, if you wanted to. So that's... Because showing where the roads are, I mean, that's a difficult thing to kind of get a grasp on. You know, they're, they're kind of be bendy, windy, they go all over the place, they're connected to our various factories, so it's it's difficult to really outline exactly that when it climbs, where it goes, and all of that. It's best just to download the save and check for yourself, or... I have an image that I'll throw up in the Google Drive, the whatdarrenplays.com slash satisfactory link. That's from the Satisfactory Calculator website that can just kind of show you where the roads are roughly, at least to give you a generalized view of it. Alright, so, in talking about this build and in thinking through, <laughs> I don't know if I was thinking correctly or not, I thought I would just mention some of the machine counts and numbers and things that are going to be involved in it. So effectively, this is the site. We'll just have a look at the actual radar. We're just over here. This is the Copper Caterium site, and the scope of the build is going to be to use pretty much the entire coastline here, all the way to the very edge before you hit the world border and it starts telling you you're going to die if you go any further. So there was an island out there called Paradise Island, which is... It did get a couple of updates, actually, before, but the developers said that it's not going to change and it's not going to be used and you can build here, so hopefully we're safe to go ahead with it. And I've obviously prepared and left a few different containers here full of stuff. As mentioned, we need around 40,000 concrete. I've got about 35,000 concrete, not even, in these various containers. I'm just going to dump in those motors into this one, pick up a few rods for myself, actually. And we'll get started on the actual dam portion of the build, which is going to be starting out here, right next to the Caterium deposit we set up in the previous episode when Terry tried to kill me over there. Still haven't forgotten or forgiven that. Alright, so I just wanted to go over those numbers myself and just double check things before we actually talk about it while building out the dam. So, I also wanted to talk about very briefly the concept for the build and why I've chosen this location. It's a very frequent comment I get in question, which is, how do you choose where you're going to go? How do you choose the production methods and the recipes and the volume that you've chosen to go with? Um, it's a, it, we could spend a long time going over that, but I'll try to give you some of my logic for how we're building in this area. So we're going to be using a lot of refineries. The build's overall plan is to use 437 refineries. Now, don't worry, we don't need them all right now. In fact, we won't need a lot of them, over half of them, for many, many hours in the game. I'm forward planning this build, much like I did with coal, where we build this large structure that's going to be largely empty, and we fill it over time when we revisit, hoping to upgrade it. 
Now, you can obviously put the machines in as quick as you want, but we won't actually have the throughput on our belt that's capable of moving the resources we need until we get to Mark V, which is a few tiers down the line. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. But the overall idea is 437 refineries. That's a lot. Now, why do we need refineries? Well, basically, the main recipe I'm going with is an alternate recipe we picked up in a hard drive a while ago that you'll need to pick up too if you want to build this build, which is the pure copper recipe. Pure copper basically mixes water with copper ore to give you a much higher volume than you otherwise would normally get. The standard recipe is 30 ore in, 30 ingots out. But our alternate recipe is going to be 15 ore in and 37.5 out. So much greater volume comes out of the same ore if you don't mind supplying the water. So you can kind of think of it as the cost, the extra cost for us is power because we're going to be using a refinery, which has a much greater power cost than, say, a constructor or a smelter. Uh, and same with then water extractors and pumps and all of that kind of thing. So we're spending the power in order to get far greater volume. And uh, obviously we needed this recipe to do so. So in realizing how many copper nodes are in the grassy fields biome, there's about eight or nine that I want to grab and some of the wider areas as well. We're going to be going down into this crater. There's some copper nodes down here as well. And all of this is going to be funneled together and put onto our road network and delivered into this factory via that road right there. So that's a large volume of copper ore coming in, which means we need a large volume of refineries to handle it all. And we'll produce a large volume of ingots as a result. Hopefully meaning that we don't need to touch copper for a very, very, very long time in the game. That's at least the idea. So why have we chosen here? Well, we need water. And if we're going to have 430 refineries, there's really no other location for us in the south of the map that can get us access to that amount of water without just pumping it from somewhere. So in the southern part of the map, we obviously built over at the blue crater biome that's in the very far east. And that's a lot of that water in that crater is now being used to supply our power. There's uh, some water down in some other craters down in this little basin area here, which is next to coal and a few other things. And there's a little bit more up in this crater that's actually raised above it. You have to go up a waterfall to, to get to it uh, if you're going from down there. It just wasn't large enough. We need a really large area. So this area is going to be perfect. We're going to build out in this big part of the, basically where the light blue is. Everywhere where the light blue is, is where we're building uh, on the coast of the map here. And hopefully that doesn't change with updates or anything. They've marked it as safe. So it should be okay in the satisfactory wiki and stuff to let you know if they're going to be planning on revising it or changing. It. Anyway, let's get building the dam. But I just wanted to point out that's why we're here. And why are we building a dam? Well, we've got these raging waterfalls here, and it can look aesthetically nice to kind of make it part of the build, I guess. All right, so luckily this is very shallow water. You can actually stand in it uh, just fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't venture too close to the edge, although we will have to in a moment. But, you know, you're not going to have a good day if you drop off there. Build another one maybe somewhere here, and another one further out. Just use these as points to obviously help us build. Okay, so we're going to start off with some foundations. Now, this one's a bit tricky. It's hard to always remember exactly where we need to come up to. I think about there is probably good. And I've hold, held control to be on the world grid. So we'll start with that. Now, where we're going to actually have to start building with this is to the side. So one there and maybe one here. So just get rid of those two. So a good way to kind of orientate yourself if you're following along is we are... On the world grid, on this axis, the, you know, east to west axis, we are not overlapping the ore deposit at all. And if we were to come over, we'll eventually clip in, right? So you clip just on the very edge of it at this height. Hopefully that all makes sense. So people have asked, by the way, how to cut the parachute as you're using it. You press C, which is the crouch key, just to cut the parachute loose. All right, so that's going to be our snap point. We're going to start right there. Which I think I'm happy to do that. Yeah. All right, so just build under it. And again. And then I've got some blueprints. Now, I've been working real hard at making lots of blueprints. And there's a lot in here that's still temporary trial and error stuff. But in all the actual categories that we've built out, these are the proper ones, I guess, that I've, I'm happy to share, basically. So they're going to be on the website and stuff like that, but these ones aren't. So check the description if you want to use any of these blueprints. They'll all be there. If they're used in a video, 
they'll be up for you to, go, um, to grab as well. Anyway, we have this one here called Dam Section. So I made a category called Foundations, with just different types of foundations that I can uh, lock together with some basically different material on the bottom than it is on top. And that lets me, it just gives me a lot more flexibility when it comes to cosmetics. Anyways, in here it seemed to say like, a, a good it seemed to be good to add a category subcategory called bespoke architecture things that could be used maybe again in the future or just need to be used on repeat a few times oh this is real difficult with this one actually let's see gotta find just a way to snap this on it without being able to nudge vertically this is so tricky but this should be the appropriate height so i just need to figure out a way to get this to yeah there we go that's right holding control helps now we can just nudge it across and make sure it's in line with the foundation itself. Yeah, all right, we're all lined up. So first one down, that's always super easy, and or um, <laughs> makes things super easy after the fact. All right, now we can just spam that out a bit further. So going on to blueprint mode by pressing the R key, it's another extremely common question I get, which is how do you switch? There, People often say like, oh, my, my blueprint isn't snapping like it did for you. It's because you have to press R. And then you go into blueprint mode, and it snaps to, it tries to identify where other blueprints are, and snaps onto it. Alright, I'm just going to go a little further out here, and we'll lock this one all the way across, and then we can have a look at some other ideas with it. Alright, so that's our base structure of the dam. We're going to do this across all, pretty much all the waterfalls, except the one on the very end, I think. Although, maybe we'll do something with it. Go back to regular mode. We're going to chop away this latch point. It's a place for me just to figure out where to go. All right, and we can just copy this one more time over. And there we are. Now you'll notice there's gaps. What's with the gaps? We're going to fill those gaps with big pillars that will make this place look a little bit better, hopefully. So one other thing I want to do is maybe we'll put a lookout tower down here. It's not, not really behaving itself. Let me just put down a foundation first. World gridded as well. Why the hell not? And then if we need to get up and down, we'll just use the lookout tower. All right, cool. So what we want to do here is um, build these pillars and make sure they go all the way down. So I'll use vertical mode. Can't go underneath that one, but we can go underneath this one. So just go down as far as you can. Um, and I'll just keep doing that across the board. And I'm just going to bring this one out further as well, just all the way across. So we've um, this is just temporary, so we can walk down here and see what's going on. Looks pretty cool down here with all the mist spraying up and everything. Really like that. It would be cool if there was like hydro power in the game or something, but they said they're never going to do that, unfortunately. I think it'd be a real cool like end game thing. You actually have to tap the waterfalls and stuff because there's quite a few in the game. Maybe a DLC, maybe an update. Who knows? Right, so we brought that all the way down. That should be a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So now we're going to latch on to this point here. Still using a 4 meter foundation so that our top bit comes over the edge. So we're 2 meters over the edge and then 2 meters below the walk line. And I'm going to go with uh, Zoop mode. And bring that across. Alright, so the reason for just doing that was to make life a little easier. I'm just going to get rid of these bits. And obviously, so basically the foundations above the grates, if you want to think of them that way, can be removed. Alright, so now we've got these kind of standing blocks. We're just going to do the same thing here that we did before and just bring them down vertically. Don't have to bring them down that far, actually, because we're going to hop down even further and just continue them all the way to the bottom and then we'll climb back up. Alright, looking good. So we need to do this one more time, but we're not going to go all the way to the top. We're going to go one down. So just do about there and just bring this, again, as far as down as you can, really. Like I said, we'll hop down on the bottom and then finish it. All right, just going to build a little staircase down a bit further. Just to allow us to get down and around. Yeah, just something like that. And maybe down again. This just let me get back up in a bit more of an easy fashion. All right, so we're at the second tier of the waterfall. We're not going to go down any lower than that, but we can actually walk here. It's totally fine, even under the water, I guess. Just a little bit, and we could just bring this all the way down then to finish it off. 
Just like that, on each pillar. Alright, so we'll just hop up and get out of that area. And we can get rid of this. And this. So that's all of the initial sort of scaffolding and kind of temporary placement gone. Now we're just left with these large pillars with this weird offset thing. So what we're going to do with that is simply use the ramps and just build one on top of the other, like so. So I'm just going to do that on each one now, and then we'll have a look at what it looks like from a distance. Alright, so that's what we're left with. So we're left with four meters there and just a little bit of two meters here creeping up with our railing going in between. So I'm trying to try and get some distance on this and have a look back at it and see what it looks like now. In fact, we just jump off the edge. <laughs> see what happens. So there we go. Hell yeah. We're damming it up. Loving it. I'm not going to make it back, am I? <laughs> I'll have to build my way back up probably. Oh no. Oh, we made it. I actually kind of made it. So I've gone further over towards the, the mainland, as it were. And that's effectively what we got. Now that's just one part of it. We gotta do it for the other sides too. I think it would probably make sense to put one extra pillar in here. It might look weird clipping through the rock, but I'm just gonna do that right now and see what it looks like. Yeah, I actually think that looks a little bit better. Just a little bit. It's more like it's being closed off, like the final grate on the edge isn't just standing off on its own. Can he actually go through here? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, almost, but no. It's just like a little secret area. Alright, so there we have it. That is the dam. Or at least the first part of it done. So, in order to continue this around, effectively what I'm just going to do is grab a chunk of foundation. Keep at the same height. Obviously, obviously the sea level doesn't change up here, so... Uh, there's no raised land or anything like that. We'll just continue this all the way across, and then we're basically at the next section. So we just need to find a, the sweet spot of doing this again. This is where it can become really difficult. We need to find some spacing, and then nudge it over because the rock is sort of in the way. Right, so damn section here, and then... Man, I can't even see what I'm snapping onto. So if we just use regular control, we're so close. I'm like two meters off, man. Why would it do that? Snap into the middle of that foundation. That's so close to where I need it, though. It just has to come up by one. One meter. There we go. I managed to... I, so I put a one meter foundation on top of it, and that allows us to line up okay. Let's do that. Get rid of that bit. And we're back in business. Let me just hop off real quick and see what that would look like. So the grate's on the side. Again, I don't really like the grate coming through the rock. I feel like the pillar should start there, so I'm going to be kind of picky about it, but I am going to move this over. So effectively, actually, we need to come over by this amount. So that'll be a pillar, right? And then the grate would start here. So get the build blueprint again. Uh, maybe I'll just get off the one I'm standing on. Right, so holding control, and that's where we want to go to. That's aligned with where I'm standing. Good. Just shave off that top part now. So that should make things look a little bit more appealing when we go further in. So again, blueprint mode, just grab that. Blueprint mode again. Just make sure the railing's on the right side. That's totally fine. Oh, I'm actually out of concrete. That's going to be a common thing here, I think, today. I'll have to go fetch some more. Yeah, that spacing looks pretty good. If anything, could it have come out of it? No, I don't think it would have come out any further. It'd look a bit strange that way. Because remember, these come out by two. So we go to here. And... Oh my god. That has to go all the way down. And then this has to come out and go all the way down as well. So yeah, it's actually pretty good spacing. So I'll, I'll do all that myself. But just so you get the idea. It's going to be the extra pillars on this one. All right, there we go. That's another section done, I think. It's as easy as that. <laughs> it was actually pretty easy. Normally I say that as a joke, because things are not easy at all. That was actually pretty easy. Considering they're not blueprinted, I'm happy enough with it. The pillars, I mean. Right, so just as an example of filling this in, if I was to get rid of this bit, 
and we were just to leave it at the like the length of the dam going all the way across. So you've got this big rock that sticks out. So like I would kind of want to cover that up with just a big wall of concrete, basically, and probably just continue that across. Um, yeah, I just can't remember if it makes any difference or not. I don't think so. So we'll just do that for now. Just go across all the way to pretty much about there. Let's block that off as a new piece of concrete. Part of the walkway, I guess. And then we can put railing around it and stuff. So that's just part of the dam, you know, walking around it. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. We're built, you know, it's built into the rock edges, so I, this isn't inside the building, so I don't mind, like, bits of rock and stuff sticking on top of it. That's okay. Yeah, I'll just fill that in just to make it look like a solid block, though. Nice. All right, so I'm just going to do it on one more section. I won't bother with the other side of it. I'll do that later. I've seen how to do it now, but I do want to do it on this small area. So I'm actually going to turn off the... Kateria Miner now and remove the conveyor belts. I maxed that with concrete in my inventory actually, so I can't pick that up just yet. I'll just feed all the Kateria into um, the truck station over there and let it be. Oh, yeah, that's so weird. It's actually a visual bug. There's a belt traveling into this truck station. The truck station's not full though, it's stopped. And if you hover over the belt, it just says it'll give me back steel, it doesn't say it'll give me back Kateria. It's just a visual bug. I think they acknowledged it actually recently where they said something some people have reported like seeing weird things with belts. So in building out this final part of the dam, or the final part, you know, on this side of things, I just want to get that height and work with it across to the new section. Because I want to stay on the world grid. It's very important we always stay on the world grid. <laughs> um, and we don't use any half increments or anything like that because it can just get so messy so fast. Uh, so that's basically where we need to bring the height to, and this is our grid. So unfortunately, the way this waterfall is going across, it's kind of at a diagonal on the world grid. It's not perfectly aligned with it like the other one was. Bring that across. Nice. So we are at the same height as the other one. Uh, we can just do this across one more time. Why not? There we go. Get down. Let's have a look at what that looks like now, just even without its pillars on. Yeah, it looks all right, actually. Yeah, because we made the pillar end there. So it's not coming too far over. The pillar is, rather than the grate itself. So that's always good. I'll bring that down. So I'll just do this now. You know the drill. All right, there we go. So we were able to fit three pillars on this side. Quite happy with that. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, the placement just kind of worked out on that because I hadn't really practiced that one at all. This one was the one that took me a while to figure out the design and where to place it and how to get it looking good, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So obviously this little path doesn't need to be there. I might add it in future or something, but this, the cosmetics of the build will largely come in the next episode. Today I just mostly want to focus on function, but the function of the dam was just to work out exactly where the, the water extractor line is going to really start. It's going to basically begin in here. So just kind of just get our bearings here at first. Uh, so we can actually mark two of these off on the milestones right now. So we have our to-do for oil processing. We obviously just did that at the beginning. Our dam is now in place. So the sizing and the layout is next. Right, so sizing and layout. This can be kind of tedious. It can take a little bit of time. I'll try to speed through with the edit where it makes sense. But effectively, what we're going to start with is building the wall from the dam up by 10. And I've just kind of chosen a random spot here. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to get the height more than anything. And then using a two meter wall, I'm gonna go across and hopefully this aligns with the road. I'm thinking it will. So if you've used my save and you're working from that, I want the road to be the same height as this floor so that people can just drive in. When I was initially kind of coming up with the idea for the build and how to do it and where to place it, I did think, like, you could just have a little ramp that comes down into the place. It's not a big deal. But the way this spacing has just worked out, it kind of just happens to be the same height. So that's just the way it's going to be. But it is pretty high off the water, you know. It means that the pumps were pumping higher than we otherwise need to be. But I think it's fine. You know, what's, like, 
you know, 10 pumps, it's like 40 megawatts. It's nothing in comparison to the 13 or 14,000 that this place is going to be running on. So I don't really mind adding in a few pumps. And you shouldn't either. <laughs> Alright, yeah, it looks like we're aligned, right? Um, so that was nice. That was all well, well and good. No problems there. Right, I'm just working out the distance from the road to the, where I made that wall. We're not going to build over the dam. We're going to build right behind it. So that's 25. Huh. It's one extra than I thought. That's kind of interesting. That could work out quite well. Okay, 25. So be it. So it's 25 foundations all the way across to there. Okay, I've got it. I was getting a little stuck just in my own head for a second. So basically... I was worried about running into that rock because we're going to be building pretty high up, fairly high up, several stories above where I am right now. And the way we're aligned, if this building was to go from here, you know, all the way out, eventually going up, we would hit into that rock only slightly, but you would still hit into it. So I'm going to come in by two. So this was 25 foundations all the way out to the dam edge. It's going to be 23 now. And we're going to go across 30. So that's 10. We'll do another 10. And we al already started on 1, so we just have to go to 9. We'll just go to 10 and get rid of that last one. Okay. Yes, this is correct. Good, 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 good. So this, this room, this floor that we're building out now, is 30 by 23. Alright, so I just wanted to also mention, when I'm talking about the sizes of these rooms, we're facing north. So the compass up on the top of the screen, you can see we're facing north, and then we're using an X and Y axis. So this is obviously a 30 by 23. 30 foundations by 23. So 30, 30 across, and 23 deep, if you want to think of it that way, right? So 30 across, 23 deep, 30 by 23, X and Y axis. That's going to be our first room. That's one of many to come. Do I have... Yeah, I've got foundations. Foundations for days. So the next one is going to be... We're going to count up by five, I think. So one, two, three, four, five. And we'll start somewhere like here, just to give us an idea. And this should go to like... 18, I want to say. So that's 10. And that's eight. That's our 18. We're going to go across by four. And then come back down the same amount. All the rooms are always rectangular to make it easier to build. Alright, so that's our next room. So this room is actually a 5 by 18. That's if you didn't include this part, right? So we could chop away that inside. So if you want to think of it like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then by 18. And this room is like a separate thing, and that's 30 by 23. Yeah. All right. Next over, we get into a bit more of a formulaic area. We're going to do 24 across by 33. So 24, that's going to be 10. And 10. All right, so that's 24. And then 33 deep. Ooh, getting dangerous. Really close to the wall there, but no, we're okay. We are okay. Great. Alright, just bring this back down. Alright, so that is 24 by 33. So, again, really big. And we're going to fill this very quickly, hopefully, with the blueprints. At least that's the idea. So we'll use the foundation tool, get something like this, and then we can just spam blueprint it out to fill all the insides. But we're not even halfway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one. How big are we going to go this time? 24 by 73. So we're going to start here, and we're going to go forward by another 5. So that's including that one. That's going to be 6. So there we go. And then we don't need to bring this over 24. So that's 1 that we're standing on. 2, 3. And then 10 and 10. We're building all the way out to those mountains. I kid. But it does feel like that. All right, so this is by 73.
All right, and that's where we end. We end just before what I believe is called Paradise Island, a place where you're not allowed to go. The kind of edge of the map is basically along this area here. You effectively just cannot set foot on it, which is very bizarre. Some people thought maybe at 1.0 it'll hold some secrets or you get to do something, but they've said that they're not going to be building on it, and it's you're free to kind of build around this area, so hopefully we're all good. I'll be very upset. Yeah, that's not the case. <laughs> I don't mind the island changing, but just please don't change where we are right now. Okay, so that was uh, 73, right? And we have to go back over 24. All right, and back up to 73. Close the loop. Oh my god. All right, that's a huge room. And now we're going to do it again. We need another one of these, but further out. So that's what we're going to do. It's 24 by 73. But we're going to start at that corner and we're going to offset it again by five. So we've got this staggered kind of look where we've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to have the same again uh, up here. Ow. Hmm. Hmm. That's not good. It looks like... Damn it. Can't go as far as I want. We're going to have to push this build up further up. Right, so there's actually been a bit of a change of plan. I was planning on building the rest of the floor out pretty much in line with down at the end there. Maybe to about five foundations in. But it turns out that the invisible border I was talking about that hurts you when you cross the beach continues across in a straight line. But then it kind of curves up diagonally like this and then goes back out. Not sure why, but that means that this area here is just where it starts to hurt you. So we can't build out that way, so I have to change the plan just a little bit. I'm shifting this entire side up, which should be okay, but it just it's thrown me off a little bit. Just a bit. Anyway, all of the dimensions and things, they'll be in the description so you can see. I don't have them right in front of me now, but once it's done, I can give you them. <laughs> You'll see how it was done after the fact. So yeah, just going to get rid of all that. I guess that's a no-go zone. It still stays as a 24 by 73. I just have to push it much further up. All right, so I've created a daisy chain of lookout towers that we can ascend in order to get a sense of scale and scope for this particular build. The floor plan alone is so large that we just can't fit it all in screen without getting at least some height and then we can get most of it in. Still can't actually fit the whole damn thing in. It's just so massive. So effectively, I've also filled in one of the rooms here to give um, a bit of an illustration for the overall plan here. So, let's go through things. Each rectangle that we're facing has a width of 24. So this is 24 by 73, 24 by 73, this one is 24 by 33, and the one on the end is 30 by 23. So it's 30 because it actually is going to have that truck station and road built onto the side of it. So the 24 is sort of reserved the way it would be for here, and then the, the remaining 6 or whatever is for the road and the truck stations. So, what's the concept? What's the plan? The sizing and layout portion of the video, so let's try to get an understanding of it and why I came to the conclusion of doing it this way. So effectively, I'm going to use that word a lot, but it's the only way to kind of summarize what I'm talking about. I decided to go with a lot of I wanted the build to be easy to follow, hopefully. <laughs> You'll be the judge of that. And we wanted to have a lot of copy and paste rooms. So if you want to think of this as a room in and of itself, it is 18 by 7 foundations. The concrete on the inside is 18 by 7. And then there's a corridor or a walkway going all the way around it. Now I've called it a room, but this factory, and the way I like to build factories, is generally open plan. If you've ever seen Tesla factories or car factories generally, you have these long, super long, big halls with machines on it, and it's usually patterns and materials on the ground that designate where kind of the assembly line begins and ends. And that's effectively the kind of thing I want to do here. So no walls in between these areas. It's all just going to be a big open plan, but it should look nice and neat and tidy as a result. Anyways, so what we've got here is 18 by 7, and that can fit 26 refineries. Now, each of our refineries, if we just look at it really quickly, is going to be taking 15 ore per minute. Okay, so we can fit 26 of them in. So 26 times 15 means that each block here, each segment, is going to require 390 ore to come into it. That's a bit of an odd number. 
interesting thing with that number is if you just double it, you get 780. Now, for the people who don't know, that is the max belt speed currently in the game. A Mark V belt is limited to 780 resources per minute. So, what we're going to be doing is building truck stations. And that's going to be bringing all of our ore in. Several truck stations. I think four in total just for copper alone. So, I actually don't think I can build one right now. But if we just even have a look at the back of it, there are two outputs. So that's 780 and 780. That's basically going to be divided between two of these segments. So one of those belts is going to be 780 traveling along, and then we're going to split it in two evenly to feed one of these segments and another one of these segments. And that, beneath this, is then going to require water. So the interesting thing then, I guess, would be if you're feeding in... So that was 26 machines, but it's going to be times two because we're thinking of two rooms. That's 52 refineries. So each refinery only requires 10 water. So it's simply... Sorry, 52. It's simply going to be 520 water. That's what we're going to require. Now, the max amount of water you can travel on one pipe, a Mark II pipe, is 600. So what we could do is, underneath here, is build every two segments, every two of these that we have. And remember, they're going to be lined up like dominoes, back to back. Every two of these we have, we need five extractors. So basically, what's that going to be? Every 14 or so foundations down, we've got a line of five extractors and a couple of pumps, pumping stuff up to this area uh, to then go f be fed up into the refineries. So that's the idea. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. And by the way, five water extractors would actually give us 600 water, so we could probably underclock one of them. We'll get to that when we do the actual water extractor. So that's the idea. Now, if you wanted to make this place more compact, you could, of course, not include these large walkways that I have between the machines. So I think they're going to look quite nice and space the place out a little bit better. But if you really wanted to pack things together and condense it down, you could, of course, get rid of them. Now, why am I not why am I not stacking refineries on top of each other like I am doing with this? Well, it's because we'd have to pump the water higher and higher. If we keep the refineries all on the same floor, then that just means there's a baseline amount of pumps we need for every pipe. Again, it just makes building a little easier, but it does mean that we have a very large footprint to the factory overall. But hopefully that gives some insight into the idea and thought behind this place. So that's going to be the sizing and layout portion of our factory build done. The next thing is going to be actually filling this now with foundations. So I'm just going to make my way back over to where our storage containers are and start loading up with concrete and iron plates. Right, so because I'm doing just foundations now for this next little while, all I need is iron plates and concrete. So I'm just going to load up my inventory with pretty much everything I brought with me for that. Now, I do have a lot, but we're going to use almost all of it, I would imagine. So I'm just going to try and somewhat even it out. Take some of these iron plates. So that should be good enough. Now, I've got a blueprint that basically separates the two types of foundations together. So let's just put one of them down to get an overall idea of it. I'm just going to shift that across. There we go. All right, so lock it in. So this, found this blueprint, very simply, is fix-it foundation on top with concrete on the bottom. And that allows us to, you know, when we're downstairs, we've got a nice concrete base to look at. But when we're upstairs, we have, you know, fix-it metal or whatever. Now, I'm probably going to go over this a little bit. But just for the purpose of filling out all the foundations, we're going to use this. And then in future, if I ever wanted to change it, we could just run over it with the... Uh, appropriate material swatch or whatever that we need to use. So, I mean, it's just a matter of now literally filling out every block I have. And if we just use blueprint mode, I just keep using my blueprint, basically, my foundational blueprints, and just bring it all, to, all the way to the edge. Now, I've done it in 4x4, four four, so it might not be able to reach all the way without creating a gap, right? Because there are uneven numbers here. But it's going to get the job done pretty quick. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, I've made it back to the summit of the uh, lookout towers. I've actually decided to drive over because it's such a ridiculous distance that it, it definitely helps just going back and forth on the with the Explorer. Anyway, so I've managed to do the first three rooms. I don't think I'm going to have time to do any of these out for a little while because doubling up the amount of material used by having two foundations on top of each other doubles the material because, uh, for those who don't know, I'm sure most people do, but 
One foundation of one meter is seven. A two meter foundation is also seven. A four meter is also seven. It doesn't matter how big they are. Um, stacking two on top of each other just doubles the cost. So that's unfortunately what we're doing because we're using two different types of material. So it just burns through your material very, very quickly. So I think what we'll probably do is move on to the truck station part of the to-do list. Um, but what I'm going to have to do for that, we've got blueprints for that as well. But it requires crystal oscillators. So I'm going to have to go back to the base anyway. I want to pick up some extra concrete and a few other things. And then I will craft. I think we're going to need maybe five or six crystal oscillators. So not many, but we have to pull a few together basically. Alright, so I've basically blocked out an area where I think the truck stations are going to go, and I've kind of mapped it against the dimensions of this overall room. I think we've got space to put these in here and keep the refineries on the floor above. Should be all good. I've removed the floor because, of course, our truck stations are built using blueprints, and it comes with a floor built in already. And if you want to save yourself some time, these blueprints are all freely accessible. You can just go to whatdarnplays.com satisfactory. It's a redirect link that takes you to a Google Drive with all of my stuff on there. The instructions on how to install them and use them are in there as well. And even now, I've added a file that tells you the exact hex colors and how I've used them as well. Because if you were doing out the roads, for instance, and you wanted to add a little bit on yourself or continue the barrier, you're like, oh, I'm not sure the exact shade of gray and yellow that he used. It's all up there now for you to use as well. So... You're welcome. No Patreon required. I don't have a Patreon or no channel memberships. Nothing like that. You can just go get them for free. Um, all I ask is you leave a like on the video. And hey, look, I'm not going to stop you from becoming a channel member. It is Christmas after all. I would appreciate it, but it's totally fine. I've actually got a record amount of channel memberships right now, so I do appreciate the support. Really, it really does. It's just, it means a lot, and it, I really do appreciate it, but it puts um, that pressure on me where I'm like, I really want to make sure I deliver now with each episode because people are are paying for the support kind of you know so anyways it's a whole other thing let's just get to building so the truck station just very quickly i wanted to mention this really just very quickly again um this is a variant of a design that i built in the previous satisfactory series that i did where i thought of the concept of a transport hub and i wanted to build out several in a row and this seemed like a good way to do it the reason we've got these soft edges is because the trucks back then used to kind of bump up against things a lot, especially when you were near them. They don't do it when you're not looking at them, basically. Behind the scenes, they run just like a calculation. But in the physical world, when you're looking at them, when you observe them, like quantum mechanics, <laughs> they behave very differently. And uh, putting these ramps in kind of made them go into the area a lot more smoothly. Anyways, we've got lights built in, the truck station with its arm coming out, some signs and things like that, and then the trucks at the back. This is the CC variant, which means its materials and colors are a little different to suit this factory, and also just a couple of the material changes at the bottom are different too. Uh, and I think the signs are slightly different. Anyways, without further delay, let's just slot these in there and see what it looks like. Another great tip, by the way, before we pop it in actually, is if you go to blueprints, you press the little plus, you can actually add them to your to-do list, and it tells you the exact amounts you need for everything that's, you know, the costs involved with the blueprint. But a little bug that's in the game right now is that this is using a couple things that I haven't actually unlocked yet. Now, you still have to pay the resource cost, but I haven't actually unlocked that billboard yet. I'm a little short on tickets. I probably actually have enough now thinking about it, but just an FYI, you can actually use these blueprints even if you haven't unlocked everything, so long as you meet the resource costs. That's probably going to get patched, but at the moment, that is how it works. Didn't intend on doing that, but I noticed after building a few blueprints, I was like, wait a second. I don't actually have this stuff because it came from my older save. Uh, so, I'm turning off blueprint mode, and we'll just slot these right in here. Keep it level. That's not level. Is that level? Yeah, sorry, I just kept thinking that was sunken down. Then we can just neatly nudge it to the side. Man, I love a good blueprint coming together. It's such a beautiful thing. Alright, so there she is. So we have our two wall-mounted floodlights. Got our big billboard with some information and stuff. I'll talk it through in a moment how I plan on it being used. We'll just snap blueprint mode on now. And now we can just sn snap these on onto each other. Excuse me. In a row. Sorry, I was trying to prevent a burp while trying to also think. It's not easy. It's not as easy as it seems. Alright, so it's going to be five in total. Just like so. So a truck is going to pull in and pull in to the left like this run down the left hand side and then it's going to do a big turn and I need to give it a lot of room because it will be using trucks in the future not just tractors. Tractors have a quite a sharp turning angle 
but trucks don't. Now, it probably doesn't matter if you're not looking at it, like I said, but if you are looking at it, it does matter. And um, you'll want it to have that clearance so it can make the turn. Anyways, and then it's going to pull up here and unload cargo. And then I was thinking it's just going to keep doing that. It's going to do it for every single one of them. And that, I think, should keep all of the belts at the back running at 780. Because if I'm trying to work out, okay, two nodes are going to deliver here and one node's going to go there and then maybe a half and then a half, I feel like it gets very messy. Whereas it's like, we're just going to almost manifold trucks, if that makes sense. So it's like, unload everything, unload everything, anything you got left and anything you got left. So the one on the end will have the least. Now, we're dealing with 4,800 ore, I believe. Divided by 780, our max belt means that we need six outputs, 6.15. So that actually means we need seven outputs. So there's two outputs in each truck station. So unfortunately, I needed an extra one just for that little bit of extra ore that's coming in. But it means we actually have the capacity to add one more node to this place in the future if I really wanted to. And then because it's fairly modular in how we're building, we could just add one of those other sections further out to deal with more water extractors and more refineries. So it's all possible and modularly acceptable to add more in here a little bit anyways. So what that's going to mean is we're going to have 780 times 6. So 6 of the outputs are going to be great. They're going to be doing 780. 4680 is what we got, and then unfortunately one of them is just going to be stuck at 120. So one of these truck stations, at the back of it, instead of having two outputs, it's just going to have one, and it's just going to be doing 120. Which is a nice number at least, because it means that it's just a belt, a uh, Mark II belt. 120 resources coming straight out the back of maybe the one on the end, and then that's just going to have to feed along to some machine that we know that is like that those are the ones that are lacking a little bit at the end. Um, yeah, basically, uh, because it is an uneven number. 52 refineries per segment. One of the segments is going to have slightly less refineries. I can't remember which one right now. Hopefully that all makes sense. Anyways, then the other thing for info would be... See, actually, the signs thinking about it maybe don't make full sense for this place, because if we do go with the manifold truck stop style, they're all going to have the same amount of numbers on them. Previously, this was really meant for like, okay, yeah, one truck is hitting this one. And it's, it's coming from three different places. You know, it, it stops off at three other miners, for instance. So that's why I had that kind of stuff. But thinking about it, maybe I'll redesign the signs. If, if they are going to do manifold, and I don't see any problem in the comments with that, I could maybe see myself redesigning the signs a little bit and changing how I give out that blueprint. Maybe. So just, just letting you know that. Kind of just realized that on the fly there. And then we have to attach it to the road in a second properly. So this is all asphalt, and this is why I'd like to put a big dividing line on it, and then also have, like, some cool turning signs, maybe a little no parking signs, and maybe actually create a little parking area for the trucks to turn. Could be quite nice. So I'll just do something like that. There we go. Yeah. All right, so we have to decide the center point for our dotted line to come down here. All right, so we have a left-hand turn here, T-junction with left, and then we need to just come... Uh, to be honest, we don't need to blueprint this. We could just build it ourselves. So what I'll probably do right here is grab the inner extension, one meter, and just flip it around. Flip this one around. Grab the outer corner extension. And just turn off souping. We don't need that right now. Pop that back in. Now, this one can just sit right under itself again. And then we're just going to change that to concrete on the bottom. Okay. These are half meter foundations. That's fine. We'll just use the regular one. So I can get rid of that now. This is our outer boundary that we use to kind of block out the area overall. So just grab this. Go across. Alright, so may I haven't figured it out yet, but maybe we could have a path going along here just like this or something. Or we could even cut the boundary. I don't know. Depends. Alright, I think that's pretty much it for the truck stations. There's actually not as much involved with them as I thought. I mean, it's all in the blueprint, the design, the planning, and the placement, and none of that's going to change now, right? It's all locked in. The signs may change, as I mentioned, but I know that at least these are all doing copper, and this one's doing caterium. 
I'll probably count them up in terms of their bay number from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And the reason that this is doing Caterium that's not going to change is because we have a Caterium deposit right beneath me, right here. So the plan is to just literally bring that straight up and then feed it across following along the route I'm taking now to meet up with this little buddy over here. So that's going to be two belts traveling parallel to each other of 780. So 780 coming out of here and 780 coming from a floor hole over there. Anything I need to figure out that might take me a little bit of extra planning here is that there's got to be a way to get up and down. And I figure that we could travel the resource in the center of that area. So I can't really push the foundations any further out without then encroaching on the dam, and that would look weird, in my opinion. Or would it? Actually, now, thinking a bit further out loud... We could actually start the tower. So my towers are normally 3x3. Three three. One, two, and three. And they travel straight up. You could maybe hook on a tower. Just somewhere like here and here and then the center point would be where the ore travels straight up so the doorway would be like here right you run along doorway you start running up your stairs in that kind of um what, how do i even describe it that just manner where we go around in a circle basically right and just keep going up and up and up and through the center is the lift that's carrying the stuff and if we were to enter from here that would still give the freedom for the miner to send over its ore into the center without me getting in the way of it I think, because I'd have to climb up over it. I'll think about it, but that seems likely. <laughs> that seems likely. But I'll need to think about if that actually spatially works before I commit to it. Um, but yeah, just I just wanted to outline that's kind of the reason for why things are shaped why they are. But as you can see, there's a lot of trial and error that goes into this. So I need to still figure some stuff out before the next episode. The next one's all about the cosmetics. But the overall logistics placement isn't really going to change of anything, except perhaps that miner. But the truck stations are the more important thing, which are going to stay in place. That's why I really do strongly recommend you don't really build alongside this one until the next episode, which I know is a little annoying for people who are eager to get going. Um, but I would say at least you can get started with some of the more mundane things, like filling in the foundations, the overall plot and layout shouldn't really change too much, and making all the materials needed in the background as well. All right, I think I can say fairly confidently that the truck stations are now done. Um, I, oh, by the way, a little amendment to that is that I feel like... This is where one of the dams starts as well. I feel like I haven't committed to it yet, but this is probably going to come out as well. What I was thinking of doing on this side is having a sort of breaker room. So we could have power come in here and then have several power switches that let us control how we power on and power down the factory, but that's a bit more advanced, so I wouldn't say that you have to worry about that yet. Just leave this area blank, as I am, and I feel like in the future we'll use it for that. Um, it would also give just a little bit of extra space for turning for the road here. Um, okay. Oh yeah, sorry, I said that we were going to do the patterns. That is one last thing to do. So the dotted line. So we need to travel a dotted line along the center here, because that's where we come in, but unfortunately we can't really do that. So we'll have to do is use the side dotted line, side corner dotted line, side dotted line. There we go. Now there's a gap here where the half foundation, you can't paint on half, half foundations. Could go over it, but I just don't like foundation clipping. So I'm going to do something like that. In fact, I probably won't even use the dotted line. I think I'll use a solid line because you're not supposed to be crossing this. So to be honest, this would be a solid. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't unlocked it yet. I have to get another one of those in the... Um, in the awesome shop. So that's going to be a solid line traveling all along here. And then we're going to put some numbers and stuff. So I think I'll do that in the next episode. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So that's truck stations for today done. The next thing is going to be adding in several copper refineries. Won't be able to add them all in. But I want to do at least one segment. So you can then see how all the other segments are then done after the fact. Uh, oh, I don't know why I put an X on that. Sorry. So an X is on the truck stations. Technically foundation is kind of done for this episode. At least you get the idea. Just got to fill in the blocks of areas. Um, so copper refineries is next. So we have to build it up on the next floor up. So the height has already been determined for me. But if you're just wondering out of curiosity, I think it's five. So uh, 20 meters up. Yeah, pretty sure that's the height. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So that's the height there. Just to double check, we'll bring that down. There we go. It's a height of five. So that's 20 meters tall. And that's where we're going to be going up and building next. We've already got the two foundations in lock. So now I just need to foundation out the top level. And then we can start looking at how we get in the um, the copper refineries. So 
I guess for now, I'll just build a little stairs that takes me up there. And I'm going to start blueprinting out more and more foundations. Now, the copper refineries don't start until over there. So that's where we're going to have to build out to. This area is copper sheets. That's caterium. And that's copper refinery. So we've got a little ways to go out just yet. Oh, yeah. Something else worth mentioning is that we actually have to use a different type of foundation here. Or blueprint foundation. Which is the two-layered one-meter foundation. It says concrete on top, grip metal on the bottom. And that's because, yeah, I just think grip metal works really well for... Especially for, like, the logistics floor. Uh... It's a bit more structural, I suppose, and it also hides wires and cables really well, so just by the nature of how it looks and how dark it is. Um, but yeah, so it's all in the eye of the beholder, it depends on what you want to do, but it does cost you steel beams, so it's a little expensive, I guess, in that regard for this early on. But um, that's the plan, at least, of uh, just extending this out. Now, this is going to be a pain in the butt to get this one to line up, first of all, but yeah, so I guess the goal is just going to be to extend this out now. So now using blueprint mode, we can just bring that all the way over to where the copper refineries are going to be. And we can start work on them. Alright, so I've put in a lot more of the ceiling, pretty much as much as I can. Remember, I've been playing for about 44 hours or thereabouts. We've been making 70 concrete per minute in the background, so there is a limit to how much I have. And sometimes that has stopped, and obviously we've used this for other things too. So, just have to wait for more to be made, and also have to takes me a bit of time to actually go out and collect it. Now, when I was looking at the map while driving around, I noticed that there's more truck stations on the map than I actually have placed. They're called docking stations. And you can actually turn this off your compass or off your map if you click these buttons up here in the top left. So I've turned it off the compass because it was just getting way too packed. Alright, I have arrived. You know the factory's big when the best way to get around it is by driving from one side to the other. And it still takes a long time. Definitely going to have to use some hypertubes, zip lines, even dare I even say power towers inside the factory or something like that. You can actually put wall outlets on the ceiling and just zip line across actually with no interruptions. Like even if you hit the joints of the... Connections, it's totally fine. So probably do something like that. Or hypertubes. But we don't like hypertubes around these parts. Okay, so what we have here is an 18 by 7 area. And it's just carved out, ready to go. So this will be ready for 26 refineries. And then this will have to be duplicated over, like, 19 times, basically. So it's quite a lot. But, excuse me, thanks to the magic of blueprints, we should be able to do it nice and quick. So we're going to count across halfway. So it's 18 across, so we go to 9. So that's 9 there. And just to double check, we're still correct. Let's go across to 9 here as well. Yep, that's 9. Alright, so that means our center point is right here. So what we can do is just carve away this initial section. You only have to do this once, so it's not too bad. Once, once for each side, actually, I guess. Alright, then we do this. We'll just grab a little segment of foundation and give ourselves a little floor to work with. So our blueprint is going to snap onto this floor, or sit on this floor, because it comes baked in with floor holes. So we'll open up our blueprints, and we're going to be building 26 copper refineries, which we've got all the materials together for. And we can get started on that now. So the blueprint snapping is going to be all over the place. It's, cra it's crazy. It's chaos. And that's because we built the foundations with blueprint. Blueprints. So for this one, we'll just turn off blueprint mode, and we'll just place it in manually. And then the blueprints can snap to this one after the fact, and we'll do that in a second. So this looks center aligned to me, and we can lock it in place by pressing H or the hotkey of your choice. For me, you can see down on the bottom of the screen, it says unlock hologram mouse 4. I bound it to my mouse, uh, which is much better for me at least. So we could go all the way out to the edge. I'm going to come in by just one, one away from the edge, and that should look pretty good, I think, when we add some patterns. It actually leaves a pretty big gap between these two areas because we've got one, two, three foundations, and then the fourth, and then we've got one, two, three. So the, the refinery, if we were to push it all the way to the edge, it takes up three foundations, including its inputs, right, and outputs. It takes up three foundations in length. So you could kind of really tuck things in there, but I wanted to make use of, a, of the space a little bit more. So I'm going to allow it to come over just that little extra, and then I'm going to do the same on that side. So they're both going to creep over, and it gives us room for a walkway between if we wanted to. So just to reiterate, I'm pushing it in just by one away from the edge. Just by one. I'm happy with that. I think it looks good. And we are center aligned. All right, let's do it. Witness my creation. There she is. Beautiful copper refinery. 
ready for water and copper to be fed into it. It's even got its little power connector ready to be hooked up to the ceiling. That's going to be the ceiling height. And the color scheme is set for the kind of look and feel of copper. Again, the color schemes are going to be in the description. If you go to the Google Drive, there's a document with all of the kind of color swatches that I'll be using. So this is kind of using a sort of a, a reddish orange. Again, kind of a coppery, bronzy kind of color mixed with a bit of like kind of teal, which I think just kind of accents the reddish orange quite well. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, so yeah, loving the look of it, really happy with it. I've colored the signs to be the same, right? There's two signs embedded on this that I've added in there. And the only issue with these, and I was aware of it beforehand, but I'm sticking to it, is that potentially this is to be numbered, right? It's like, oh, this is, uh, you know, number 13 or whatever. The problem would be the fact that we're going to have like 300 of these. So if this was number 340, you know, the numbers are clipping over the edges just so slightly. Coffee stain, can we get some, can we work on that? Can you just make the font smaller the wider it gets? Or just make the font a little smaller? I don't know. Do something, please. Um, I thought about adding different signs in. You could have three signs next to each other. You put a number on each. But I was like, come on, who's going to go around? Like, the effort of going up to every machine three times, six times, if you count the numbers on the back as well, adding the numbers in. So I've gone with one sign knowing it's going to eventually clip, but I still think it's it's just that comp... And, what, what is, what's the word? I'm compromising and saying, like, look... It's just got to be the way it is. So this is going to be machine number one, I guess. It could either look like that, or we could just do maybe just zero one. And then when it goes over, it gets to 99, it goes 100. Maybe we could break it down differently. I don't know, but I'll have to think of something. I'm not adding three different signs for the different numbers each. It'd be too crazy. And you can't really add two. It wouldn't look right. So let me know what you think. But we'll just leave it as default for now. And then we'll have to go around and update them later. So what we can do now is just get rid of that flooring. And we just add it in on the side there and just put the regular floor back. So that's grip metal for the underside, which is the logistics floor. This is the floor we walk around on and enjoy the machine. All right, I was getting a little off track. Let's place down the rest of these 25 extra copper refineries and see how they all look together. Now, there's one last trick with this. Everyone's going to have to use the locking hologram. Now, you could just build them all next to each other, snapping on like this. Remember, if you're looking away and you're trying to snap, it might be confused with the other blueprints in the area. But if we just look at the machine itself and aim up, we can latch onto it no problem. However, I'm going to lock it and we're going to move it over by one. It's just a simple press of the left arrow key. That's all we got to do there. Just one. And we got to do that for every one we put down. So we look, we lock, we move. Look, lock, move. And we have to add six in total. So that's number four. Number five. And that's the final one, number six. So that's seven in total. Now the reason for that movement is it's spacing them out just slightly more. So there's a couple things. I don't like the fact that ladders get like encroached on. And also when the animations are playing, there's uh, these things kind of jet out from the side of the refineries and they kind of clip over each other. Now, I know it's a very small thing, but it's also to fit within the foundations that I've set. It just works a little bit better uh, this way anyway, where we're going to have this kind of pattern going around here. We're going to have a pattern going on the inside as well. Uh, so it should look a little bit better that way. Although, hmm. Yeah, well, anyways, I was thinking you can't actually have a corner pattern here, but we might be able to work around it. We'll talk about that in the future. Either way, it looks like it's more even spacing all the way around. If we consider that ladder, it's like one kind of, uh, you know, grid space out. And so is this. So I like that, you know, it's, it just fits a little bit better. So let's just continue that now on the other side. We can just copy this and move it. So again, we lock it, but we move the other way now. We'll do that six more times. Now, I could have actually built it into the blueprint where you add, if you add like something like um, a little road barrier, I could extend the dimensions of the blueprint out by one, but it just seemed like now that we have uh, hologram locking, quite easy to do that, I think. So there we go, that's 13. So we just need to add the next 13. So we're going to do the same thing again, which is uh, just grab this, count out to nine. Yeah. And then we just cut away this and we'll just do the same thing we just did before, right? 
We just need to find a spot here to latch onto. Grab that blueprint. Oh, that's just a refinery. Uh, turn off blueprint mode, rotate around, outputs facing me. And then we push in by one, right? So that's saying that it's overlapping something. Oh, it's just the... Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So yeah, one in from the, the edge, and we are center aligned, and boom. All right. Just fill this gap back in before we put the other ones down, because it can be a bit trickier to do that when it's completely blocked in. Alright, cool. And then we just get cracking again, right? So blueprint mode, refinery copper, facing the right way. Nope. Got close with that one. Lock it, move it, and we are go good to go. Oh. It depends on your angle, actually, which directional arrow key you have to press. Oh, by the way, the last thing I didn't actually look at was the center, right? We have all the how good is that? We're all hooked up. Don't worry about the floor hole bug. It's not going to happen with these. It only happens with pumps. There's not going to be any pumps attached to these, so they should be fine. One thing that's a little weird, though, is I specifically colored this. Yeah. So that's an interesting little bug. So look at this, right? I've got a swatch here. It's yellow and gray. If I just look at the connection point... And then look away. I'm not clicking anything. It becomes teal. And that's because its color is set to that. But there's a bug in the game where it doesn't actually update until you reload the game. Or until you do what I've just done, which is manually refresh it. So we're not seeing the full kind of cool colors just yet. But uh, effectively, like, the colors are supposed to be matching the, the build itself, right? So that should look quite nice when we load back in, at least. And there's room here for us to walk between them, check on the machines, or build a little walkway or something. It's quite nice. I'm liking it. So just on the copper area that we built in the first or second episode here, I just thought I would mention when all of these containers keep filling up, you know, I've got like 50 or 60,000 wire. I've got like, I don't know, 20,000 cable. When they get full, what I often do is I just visit here and I change these machines to switch them from making wire. They were feeding into the cable area. Switch them from making wire to making copper sheets instead. And then I just let them fill up this box. So. That's how I've been getting some copper sheets in the background. You're going to need a lot of that for the pipes that are going to come in the next episode. So, yeah, I mean, um, people have been making this stuff in the background somewhere anyway. But I just thought I would mention that that's what I've been doing, at least to get it. Uh, so I was just making a run to get some steel pipe and just fetching a few extra motors. Just going to head back now. All right, there we have it. None of the machines have been labeled yet, but that is our copper refinery. And you could make the argument, what's the point of the 100% if they're all basically going to be 100%? I don't know. It's just that many factories I've built in the past do have varying numbers, and even if it's just one or two that need to change, it's really nice being able to spot it at a glance. So perhaps, maybe, we'll do under or overclocking. I don't think so, but you never know. Maybe the one on the end or whatever, if we can't get our numbers right. So, speaking of the numbers, we're going to be pulling in, ideally, 4,800 copper ore. And that's going to be refined... In, well, we're going to put it into a bunch of refineries. How many? Let's well, divide it by 15. That's our input. 320 refineries. Those 320 refineries are making, or will be making, 37.5 copper ingots. So that's 12,000. We're going to be making 12,000 copper ingots, potentially, per minute. You know, that's volume. <laughs> so that's our first block there. Now, the difficulty in the build isn't in the complexity of any of the machines, it's in the volume that we're dealing with. Dealing with 12,000, the difficulty there is our belt speed is limited to 780, so we need at least 15 belts. That's actually not as bad as it might initially seem, I thought maybe it would be even more. So 16 belts is what's needed to carry all of that stuff out of here, so that's a lot of truck stations that we then have to bring over to a train station. Although thinking about it, actually sorry, I'm getting really ahead of myself, not all of this ore leaves here. So that's a good point. A lot of it will get refined down into other things. So in th it probably only need about six stations in, in total or something. Anyways, I'm getting again ahead of myself. It's just fun to talk through all this. So like I was saying, the difficulty is in the volume, not in the complexity. The ease of the build is the fact that we have this. Again, it's the same dimensions, 18 by 7. That's what we're going to have everywhere. If you can get the overall layout correct, 
Then you just slot in these, as I call them, dominoes, 18 by 7. They all build the same. And that was done on purpose. It's to make it modular or feel modular, right? Not that you're inter-swapping, interchanging or swapping parts, but that it's like, okay, this is this module, and I have to duplicate that module, uh, I think, 18 or 19 times. So that's our halfway point. We'll just start again, right? Cut this middle section out. And cut out this section as well. Do we... Thank God I'm not creating any crates. Let's bring this down temporarily. Just create a bit of a floor for us to work with. All right, and then we'll pop down the blueprint for refinery caterium. So I'll turn off blueprint mode. So we'll aim it towards me just to keep a bit of consistency. Now the caterium, they only need three of these sections. They actually only need two and a half. So one row doesn't even need to be filled um, based on the volume that they're going to be doing. So you can s hang on a second. Oh, that's the input. I was going to say, what's going on here? We'll rotate it around. My bad. Not that it really matters. Except it matters to me, which means it matters. All right, there we go. Push it in by one. Keep it consistent with our little buddies over there. And let's lock it in. There she is. Very similar styling to the other machines over there. That red is actually not the same colors over there. I decided to give this a red trim to it. I just thought it would look kind of cool with the kind of creamy, beigey color that we have. So, yeah, quite happy with it. Interesting to see what people think. Again, using the same sort of signing format, signage, uh, where we try to make it look part of the machine. I feel like, if I'm not mistaken, it actually emits no light, and that's how you get that nice... So you, you select matte, right? If it was glossy, it would have that sheen to it. You don't want that sheen. You want to keep it matte. And then if it had any emission strength, especially on lumen, it would be way too bright, and it causes a bit of lens flare and stuff like that, so you turn all that off. But it does mean if the room gets dark, the sign is not visible. But that's okay. We want it to look like it's part of the machine. All right, so that's our first one down. Just do the same with the others. Um, yeah, I was going to build a blueprint designer and talk you through this, but I feel like I don't need to now that it's sitting here. You can kind of see... This would effectively just sit on a blueprint designer like that. So I normally build out a little, you know, two by three foundation, build the refinery on top of that, and then I, at the very end, cut away the foundation and save the blueprint. And that's why it's sort of floating. And that's why I have to build the bottom bit first. The reason I build it on a foundation is just so that I can, I mean, you don't have to, you could just build it on the ground, but it's mostly for the, um, the floor holes. That way the floor hole comes down the correct length. And when we build across this floor hole with some concrete or whatever it might be, the floor hole still operates just fine. And that's why I've done it that way. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to bear with me for a moment while I give you a little behind the scenes information. So effectively, when I was placing down the Caterium refineries, uh, I placed about, I don't know, as many as I could. I think it was around 13. And then I kind of called it there, wrapped up the episode and said, see you later. We'll see you in the next one and explained a few final things, but I just felt like it wasn't really good enough. I woke up the next day after that was like a six hour recording, voice was shot, so it had to end, but it wasn't time to end, if that makes sense. So I decided to come back in the morning, do a little bit of extra work on this floor, and then we can finally like wrap this up properly and discuss a few of the key elements that you might want to know if you decide to build along throughout the week before the next episode, but also just to make a bit more sense of the build, because logistics is something that I didn't really talk about at all in this video, which is, might be, it's kind of strange. I guess I thought about it, like I could sit at the start explaining top to bottom all the logistics and what the plan is going to be, but it felt kind of like it would be taking way too much time, whereas in the next episode, we're going to be doing the logistics, so it's going to make a lot more sense in that one, and that's where it needs to be explained anyway. To do that, I'll actually be using some blueprints as well, so I'm not even sure exactly which ones just yet, but I'll be making blueprints that'll have the proper spacing for all the different builds that we've done here, and that way, hopefully, we can even do the logistics quite quickly using modular blueprints. And thankfully, if we make mistakes now, we can obviously just delete them nice and quick. So that's basically it. I decided then to fill out the rest of this floor. So this entire floor now, our machine floor, the floor that we will walk around, has its foundations and the segments are now clearly defined, right? So before, I don't know what's going to be included in the video, right? Because it's too much footage to think about in my mind right now. But before I was placing asphalt and trying to talk about corridors and things like that, I decided, forget the asphalt, we'll just use concrete everywhere. This is going to be coated concrete in the future, but we haven't unlocked that yet. We need plastic. 
Uh, but when it becomes coated concrete, it'll look really nice, and then we'll have either concrete or asphalt in the center. But this, when we get the bird's eye view in a moment, when we climb up on the power towers, we'll have a look down, and we can see that all of these segments, these concrete segments, are 18 by 7. And they're wrapped around by, you know, corridors of three width. And that always delineates every segment. So that's why the build, hopefully, I've been calling it kind of modular, modular segments. Modular might be the wrong word, because you're not taking one out and putting another thing in. It's more just like broken into pieces, bro broken into segments, effectively. And every segment is the same, except for one, which is actually going to be the one I'm going to show right now. So I decided just to also help people get an idea for the look and feel of the build and the color schemes I've gone with. The numbering on the machines, you know, we're going to have 65 Caterium refineries. So these are obviously the Caterium refineries. I've numbered as many as I could place down. I'm just totally out of material. We need to wait for a little bit more time to pass. Plus, we actually can't use every single machine anyway. So in the case of copper, the copper refineries take 15 copper per minute. All right, so let's see. Let's do a little quick math here. On a belt of 780, if we divided that by 15, that gives us room for 52 machines. So that's two of these segments. Each segment has 26 machines. So it's you could do it uh, one there, and then another there, and that would be our 52 combined. So one belt of 780 would feed 52 machines across these two segments. Okay, so that's how that would work. Now our best belt at the moment is just 270. So 270 divided by 15 is just 18 machines. So you only really need to put 9 in each segment, right? Because you're still going to be dividing it by the two segments in theory. So you'd only have 9 there and then 9 here. And that would be it until we keep ramping up the belt speed. So you don't need this many refineries. It was just to give you an idea of the look and feel that I'm going for. So these, I'll probably put all the Caterium ones in because there's only 65 of those <laughs> only. Uh, whereas the copper, there's like 350 or something like that. So it's, again, the numbers will be broken down in the next episode a lot more. But, you know, all you need to know is that you don't need to place more than nine in any of these blocks that we're doing out here. So let's finally climb up and have a look. Uh, from up high about what the, well, basically the spacing and the corridor width and all of that. Uh, we'll just break out the zip line. Alright, so like I said, these are all the same, which is what I think makes the build somewhat more manageable. That's why I've done it that way. It's so other people can kind of follow it along a bit more easily. And you can see not all the segments are full up with all their refineries, but it kind of gives you an idea of what this place will look like when they are all full up. It's just going to be stacks and like just chimney stacks for days that's all you'll be able to see basically uh across the whole place and think of the power consumption alone like you couldn't run this place even if you did add in all the machines even right now so that's effectively what it's going to look like so this concrete here that's painted gray uh, the darker gray is effectively the walkway so you'll notice when these two rectangles let me just put that away when these two kind of segments right with this big block here and then with this big block here when these meet we have a double corridor on each side now i did that semi on purpose the idea was that maybe in the future and i'll discuss this probably in the next one we'll block out certain bits in the center and you could have a glass case that shows you some of the resources because of course this build hides all of the belts on the floor below now the floor below will look awesome it's gonna be really busy and everything but you want to have a, a few you want you want to have you know, the game is satisfying to watch your belts being full and moving and also just to be able to troubleshoot without having to go downstairs that's another thing we'll have to do is in certain places here we'll have to carve out like little staircases that can go downstairs so that's why it's one of the reasons why the corridor is wider than it um needs to be right it's because we'll have staircases we'll also have zip lines traveling along these main corridors so we can just uh, travel along it really quickly, maybe some factory carts, things like that. There are 19 of these segments. I'm just going to keep calling them segments. That seems to be the best word for them. 19 in total. So to give you an idea of the layout, we've got one there and one there. So that's two. Those are going to be doing the steamed copper sheets. So that's an alternate recipe I don't even have yet. I just know about it. So it's going to be making copper sheets. There's two segments over there. 52 machines, I think. Then there's three segments here, one, two, and then the one in the back, and there's going to be 65 here. So that's going to be um, 26 plus another 26 plus 26 would be too much, right? That's 78. But if we half that last 26 to 13, we get 65. So that's where we're going to go. So one of these segments, basically, is going to have the machines running along the center rather than on the edges. 
maybe, or just have not as many on the sides. I haven't figured out the exact layout yet, but just to give you an idea, the Caterium is on this band of three, and then all the copper is on all the rest of them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this, this entire line and block here is the same length as this one, so that's another seven there, so that's 14 in total. Let's just give you an idea, right? They're all the same, 18 by 7, 18 foundations across 7, with a corridor or walkway of 3 wrapping around every side, including, like, they don't double up on each other, right? You even have 3 from here to here, and 3 from there to there. So that's the way we're doing it. That's how things are going to be... Um, that's how things are going to be built, basically. So what i got to do now is, in between episodes, is fill out the floor below and fill out the floor above, and then we'll start the next episode ready to place in some machines. So the floor above is going to be two wall height, and then there's a floor above that, um, if I recall correctly. So there's still many floors to come, and then the floor above that is the one that has the machines on it. So yeah, lots to do. Still have to build out some of the dam and things like that, so just so much to do with this build, but... I'm really, really excited for the next one because we finally get to deliver things in, turn it on, and see how everything progresses. Got to do the water extractors, got to do the miners, delivering the ore. Oh my god. So much to do. <laughs> All right, that's going to have to be it for this episode. I'm really curious to see what people think of this build. Hopefully it's not too ambitious. I do think it's not that complicated. It's just big. So we'll see how it all goes. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.